G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Do you leave your fence repair until it's just a little bit too late and the cattle try it out, push it off the posts and push the whole thing over? Well today I'm going to go through some easy maintenance steps to avoid your fences getting to this point that don't take long at all and I'm going to show you a tool that's really really handy and you don't even need to know knots. Let's get into it. And hey guys, if you like this video, please don't forget, you can subscribe down below, give it a thumbs up, you've got no idea how much that helps the channel. I love putting this sort of stuff out, and I hope you enjoy watching it too. Now as you can see, this fence is a few years old, it was installed by someone else. It wasn't, they didn't do a too bad a job on the fence itself, but the low lines have been testing it out, it's gone away. So let's fix it up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove any broken materials off the fence line just to make the tensioning job a bit easier. I would suggest replacing this. It's got a permanent weak point now. So we've removed all the broken bits and components off the fence and it's just looking a bit sad and saggy. We need to get this fence strained up again without wasting copious amounts of time and using a whole heap of tools. Well today I'm only going to use two. The first tool I'm going to use should be fairly familiar to everyone. Good fencing hammer, hit the staples in that end, take them out that end, cut wire there. So I'm going to use that for all of those jobs. The second tool I'm using might be familiar to some people. This looks a lot like a texas fence stretcher but of course we can't get them anymore it's now made and manufactured and very high quality by james higgins out of tamworth in new south wales so today i'm going to be using this brand new product i'm going to review it going to see how it works and we're going to fix up this fence in 10 minutes or less by the way he sent me instructions bless him so if you're into that sort of thing there's instructions available as well let's get into using the tools so just as we start straining up, I've cut myself five plain pieces of wire, round about a ruler length, about about 12 inches, 30 centimetres long. And I'm going to start with the bottom wire. I'm going to retension the bottom wire first, because when you think about it, you've got two end posts, you start to pull them together, they might move a bit in the ground. If you start moving them with the bottom wire first, there'll be far less effect by the time you get to the top wire on the eventual slackness of all the other wires. So always start at the bottom. So the whole process is really, really simple. Bung on a set of speed dealers, grab your fence stretches, Stick them on the wire, just hook them on, pull them apart, and then pull the handles together. Now, you can use a bit of your body to help you pull the handles together, and then secure them with the chain supplied. That's now got your fence nice and tight. All you've got to do is twitch up this natural horseshoe here. So we'll use a piece of plain wire, stick it across the gap in the jaws at the same level as the fence. Then I'm going to use what I think is probably the most ingenious part of this tool, this thing called a needle. They sell those separately, but to be honest with you, I'm really taken with it. You slide it on your plain wire, right up to the point where you need it, and then all you have to do is twitch it around, and it automatically feeds the wire out of itself. If you have trouble twitching wire, this is the tool that will stop those problems. It is so simple to use. Slide it on, get it to the point where you want to start twitching, start spinning it around, it does the rest. Now have a look at this. If you hold your tongue right, it's even going to move the barb along the wire for you as you use it. How cool is that? I meant to review these things, but I've ended up loving this. Really, really simple tool. It's only a few bucks extra. Grab it when you order one. Now all we have to do is secure the horseshoe onto the plain piece of wire so that it doesn't come loose and there's no way it can get going. So we slip our twitcher in. The fence will hold these things straight for us and just spin the twitcher around, securing our horseshoe to the plain straight piece of wire. You can't get 
simpler and easier to use than that. Once you're finished, they fall off and now your wire's nice and tight. No knots, no cutting, so you haven't decreased the strength of your fence. There's no cutting, no knots, no unwinding, no mess, no fuss. This is the easiest way to fix up a barbed wire fence that's been pushed on by cattle that I know of. If you know of a simpler way, comment below, guys. Let's do the rest of this fence and start stapling it back on. So if I leave you with anything today, I suppose the main take home messages are always wear your speed dealers when you're repairing a fence, particularly if you're working with older wire, all sorts of things can go wrong. The second thing is when you're tightening up your fence, whether it be from brand new or you're repairing one like today, always start at the bottom and work up to save slackness appearing. And the third is always spend the time to get good tools, no matter what those tools are, to make sure that you stay safe and that the job doesn't go way too long. You've got no idea how hard it is to do these simple tasks on a farm if you're not using the right gear. Use gear that's going to make you look a professional, you'll enjoy your day, you'll get the job done better and at the end of the day everyone's going to go home a lot safer. If you'd like to find out about any of the products that I review on my videos, head over to my website. There's links to all of the products that I review and reckon are pretty good. This is going to be on there. Um, it is a fantastic tool, save you a whole heap of time if you've got cattle and barbed wire fences. I wonder if he's got another fence I can do. This is fun. Always cut off your dags. Never leave dags in the paddock. No one likes a dag. So now that I've finished stapling my wires on, I think you'll agree with me. She's looking good again.